So recently, Sam Altman sent an internal memo to everyone at OpenAI. Code red, everything stops. Fix chat GPT, all resources on quality. And I mean, everything stopped. The ads they were about to launch, delayed. AI shopping stuff, on hold. Health agents, nope. Pulse, their personal assistant thing, don't even touch it. In December of 2022, about three years ago, Google treated ChatGPT as a serious problem. And Sundar Pichai, the CEO, asked Larry and Sergey, the original founders, to help return. And a lot of teams kept working all the way through the holiday breaks. Now, it's opening eyes turn to panic because now Gemini is kicking their trash. So we've literally seen a reversal. November 21st, Google dropped Gemini 3, and it absolutely topped out on all of the benchmarks. It beat ChatGPT 5. Then the CEO of Salesforce, Mark Banoff, who I'm not a big fan of, but like will, will run with me here for a minute, posted that he used ChatGPT every day for three years, tried Gemini 3 for two hours, said he's not going back. One month after Salesforce signed a $100 million deal with OpenAI. Now that takes, that's eating a fair amount of crow there. So then Anthropic drops Opus 4.5 last week, and it also is beating ChatGPT 5. So GPT-5 is not even really in the runnings anymore. OpenAI is bleeding cash. And we're going to dive into a whole bunch of the reasons that we are seeing OpenAI file its code red and why I think this we're not going to see much of a turnaround here. So let's dive into this today. All right, so OpenAI is bleeding cash. They lose over $14 billion of projected loss by 2026, making $20 billion of revenue by spending 40 to $50 billion. They've raised $6.6 .6 billion in October at $157 billion valuation. But when you're losing money that fast, see, the thing is, is they raise that money uh, on the assumption that they were the leader. But if they start losing, then that number is going to look really stupid really fast. And I think it's already starting to look pretty stupid. Now, ChatGPT says it has 800 million weekly users. I think that number is highly inflated, and there's a lot of other people starting to put skepticism to it. Gemini now has 650 million monthly users, so the gap is closing really fast. And I think the music is starting to stop for OpenAI, and they're trying to look for a chair. So the product is a total mess. They've tried to fix some safety stuff, but users said that it got boring, so then they tried to loosen it. Then they tried to add erotica because why not? You know, porn fixes everything, right? They tried to bring back some personality. Nothing is happening, and now they're in a full code red. Altman saying that the new reasoning model next week is going to beat Gemini 3. But haven't we heard this music before? In August, they dropped GPT-5 and they said it was going to be amazing and people hated it. So the irony is totally amazing here because in the beginning, OpenAI caught Google sleeping. Google had Lambda and they had it ready, but they didn't launch because they were worried about the reputation. Chat GPT dropped and then went viral and Google totally panicked. They rushed out BARD in February 2023. And I remember going and using BARD for the first time and thinking, this is Google's attempt to try to beat them. Now, the first demo had wrong space answers, had the stock totally tanked for $100 billion in one day for Google. But now it's open AI in a similar boat. So the, then there's a real problem here, right? Ilya, OpenAI co-founder, now at his own company, said it out loud. In 2020 to 25, 2020 to 2025, it was the age of scaling. All you had to do was just throw more compute at it and you could continue to go bigger. So it was a race to the top. But the problem now is to get even just a few percentage points better, you have to throw 100x more training. That doesn't work and it doesn't scale. So OpenAI has totally hit a wall. They can't just spend more money and get better results. They actually have to turn to real engineering. LeChin from uh, Meta agrees and he says, we're not getting to human level AI by scaling up LLMs. He says, it's just not going to happen. And I agree. I've been saying that on the channel for a long time. We've definitely hit the point of diminishing return. So OpenAI's whole strategy was spending more to build bigger, but now that doesn't work anymore. So they're going to launch ads, but engineers found code in Android app last week. But this is now getting delayed because Almond says, we've got to put everything to fixing the model. And they're bleeding talent. Mir Murati, the former CTO, started Thinking Machines. They took 20-plus of OpenAI's people. Wang went to Meta's super intelligence. So they've totally declared code red, but they don't have the people to actually help them build it. So that's really the overall problem here, is that they're bleeding the top talent, and $1.5 trillion of commitment needs growth, but they aren't seeing that. So let's dive into some of these reports here. So we can see OpenAI CEO Sam Altman declares code red on ChatGPT competitors. 
Um, we can also see that Altman told employed in a memo that they should, that there was a code red that they needed to better chat GPT. Novel idea, I know. Google introduced its AI model, Gemini 3, to widespread praise. Totally kicking everybody's butts, right? Salesforce and CEO jumps in even after they've committed $100 million of spend. You look at Google over the last six months, nothing but green and nothing but up, right? Over six-month period, this is incredible. So OpenAI has an ambitious, ambitious revenue goal, and I love how even they're trying to be nice here and say ambitious revenue goal. Now, let's jump into some of these other parts. OpenAI's Code Red announcement. The irony of this announcement is that Google was first tech giant to issue a Code Red. On December 21st, 2022, exactly three weeks after ChatGPT was announced, Google issued their Code Red. Google is concerned about ChatGPT's threat to the future of Google's search engine. Today, OpenAI has issued their first Code Red as Google's Gemini 3 model has seen massive growth. OpenAI is now pausing many of their side projects to focus on improving ChatGPT amid increased competition. So what does this all mean? And in, in this author's view, this is extremely bullish and another sign of the technology revolution we're now in. The immense competition we are seeing in AI is the perfect example of why capitalism is the backbone of innovation. More competition equals more innovation equals more value creation. Asset owners will win. And they have a screenshot here from Google's Code Red from December 21st of 2022, almost exactly three years, right? And now Sam Altman is issuing theirs on December 2nd, three years later. Now, if you always want a great take here, one person to turn to is Gary Marcus. You want to hear somebody beating up uh, AI? Gary Marcus is your guy here. The words above mostly could be written earlier today, but they're actually written from Substack nearly two years ago in an essay called Opening Eyes Got 9.9 .9 Problems and Twitch Ain't One of Them. The basic thesis was that when that although OpenAI was the darling of AI, things could change. Things took longer to unravel than I thought they would, but OpenAI's unraveling has begun. So this is from an article that he wrote in January of 2024 that Gary wrote then, and we're already seeing it. The Wall Street Journal reports the company just declared Code Red. They're terrified that Google's model has eclipsed them, but in a reasonable measure, OpenAI has clearly squad squandered the sizable lead they once had. Absolutely, totally true. And he goes through all of this. The Code Red also comes on the heels of another recent internal memo in which Altman acknowledged that the company, quote, could face some temporary economic headwinds. So he went from that to Code Red in less than a week. And after the company's CFO seemingly attempted to lay groundwork for potential AI industry bailout. Now, I'm hoping that Washington wants nothing to do with this, but I don't bank on politicians, regardless of which side of the aisle you sit on. Altman's complete non-answer to Brad Gerson's question at the beginning of the November about the discrepancy between the company's modest revenue and enormous trillion dollar commitment is a further sign of how trouble the company is. I really think that's actually going to be seen as the moment where everything changed was, and I've covered it here before, but when Brad uh, Gerson's question here questioned Altman and Altman lost his crap on the interview and it just became embarrassing. Now, it's another announcement of another one that's been definitely hitting them lately. Finally, more people telling doing the math. IBM CEO says there's no way spending a trillion dollars on AI data centers will pay off at today's infrastructure costs. IBM CEO walked through the nap walked through some napkin math on data centers and said there's quote no way to turn a profit at current costs. There's a quote from him. Eight trillion dollars of capex means you needed roughly eight billion dollars of profit just to pay for the interest. Now you don't have to be a business major to know that if all you're doing is paying for the interest at an eight hundred billion dollar bill probably not something you want to get into right and we could go into this but like there, there's no way we get to this now i know the race has been to try to get to agi but that still doesn't warrant the level of spending that we've been seeing the age of ai scaling is over the past half decade ai labs operated under a def, uh, delightfully simple principle there are more gpus of the problem feed models more data and watch performance climb a couple of things were broken about this first of all one you can't scale gpus indefinitely right there is no literal like there is a finite limit that you can get to gpu scaling it just is true. Moore's law was they could only pack so many transistors into a chip. You only pack so many GPUs into a data center. The next problem is there is actually a finite amount of data. I know it's been interesting to watch over the last 20 years where we thought data was unlimited, but the reality of the matter is there is a finite of good data. So I guess the emphasis, emphasis here is clean, good data. And then watch the performance grow. We're starting to see incremental differences. Gemini 3 is clearly one of the best models. But it's only incrementally better than GPT 2.5. Now, everybody keeps saying the word exponential. 
exponential means that it would have to be like multiple times better. We are seeing incremental change. So the artificial intelligence industry has experienced a profound transformation that every product leader needs to understand. The simple formula that powered the last five years of AI progress, bigger models, more data, more computer hitting practical limits. Instead, we're witnessing something more nuanced. AI's awkward adolescence where the field must learn new tricks just to grow beyond growing bigger. And that's what we've been preaching here on Startup Hack for a long time. Um, and so, you know, for the past, you know, a OpenAI co-founder Ilya Sus, Sus I'm gonna eventually learn how to say his last name, captured the shift perfectly. He said, pre-training as we know it will end because we have but one internet. The data that fueled this growth um, spurt, essentially the entire web has been largely consumed with some estimates suggesting that we've hit peak data. The diminishing returns are real and measurable. Simply making models larger no longer delivers the exponential improvements we saw with GPT-2 and 3. Industry voices from Mark Andreessen to researchers at leading labs acknowledge that models are converging at similar capability uh, ceilings. This isn't theoretical. It's showing up in lab results and investor sentiment, with NVIDIA stock reacting tepidly to record, record revenues as markets question whether $400 billion in annual AI infrastructure spending will generate returns. So... You know, and this is some of the other things that we talked about before. So what does this mean for product leaders? The implication for product development are profound but not apocalyptic. Users won't feel these shifts immediately. You'll see bigger, smarter, faster models shipping at pace. However, the economics and timelines of AI development are changing. The $400 billion being poured into AI infrastructure assumes continued exponential improvements. If those don't material, we see a shakeout similar to the dot-com bubble. Now, I don't really know exactly what this looks like in the AI era because part of the thing with a dot com bubble is there was un there was unreal value was propped up. AI does have a value. People are using it. People have signed up for it. Pets dot com or Cisco overselling you know material was different than what we have today, but valuations are clearly inflated. So. Success will come from balancing efficiency gains with strategic bets on emerging architectures, not from assuming the bigger is better playbook will run forever. I think we're going to see this on a niche down. I think we're going to see people continue to take AI, to niche down on it, and to come to specialized use cases where AI is getting used in everyday software development. All right. This is why OpenAI is a code red. In two weeks since the Gemini launched, ChatGPT unique daily active users, seven-day average, are down 6%. Seven days. 6%. That is a mass rush for the exit. You don't see user bases drop this much that fast. So again, 191 million from seven day average visits. So these are the kind of numbers that you see that are definitely trends in the wrong direction. So when you see this and you're Sam Altman, you're definitely calling for a code red. Now, curious to hear what you guys think. Do you think I'm off? Do you guys love G um, OpenAI and ChatGPT and Sam and think you're all just buddies and that Sam's going to go and deliver AGI and GPT-6 is going to be everything that GPT-4 and 5 were promised to be? Curious to hear what you guys think. So leave a comment down below. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to build custom software solutions for companies. So make sure you uh, hit us up if we can help your company. Check out startuppack.com. And here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward. Let's connect.
connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com Spencer.